Dear viewer, I am up at the butt crack of dawn in Bloomington, Minnesota. Why? For the explicit purpose of catching an entire day of speed running. Here at Games Done Quick 2022 it is a 24-hour a day, seven days for a full week of speed running for charity on Twitch. To date, they've raised $37 million. They're the single largest donor to Doctors Without Borders. It's a fantastic event that I've wanted to be here in person for for a very long time. And I figured that since I'm coming here, there'd be no better place to learn about the ins and outs of muscle memory than from these geeky, twitchy controller and mouse and keyboard wizard people. They're way cooler than those Rubik's Cube dorks. But if we are to learn about muscle memory from the men and women here at SGGQ and maybe what's happening inside their heads while they do frame perfect tricks and the sort, we gotta lay some scientific groundwork first and I gotta get up. Get up! how many things you do on a daily basis that you're not really even thinking about. Whether that's brushing your teeth or riding a bike or checking Twitter and then checking Instagram and then going right back to Twitter even though no one liked your post. These are all almost autonomous, unconscious motor movements that we're making with our hands and other parts of our bodies. This is an implicit long-term memory in our brain, specifically motor learning or what we have called muscle memory. Now muscle memory allows us to make efficient movements through the world, to not have our consciousness intrude on what we have done a thousand times before. In fact, once we do stop and really think about what we're doing, that's when we can mess up. Absolutely amazing run. Yeah, no kills, no continues. Well, there are no rations on your Phoenix stream. And the alerts were good. That yeah, big boss rank. I've been speedrunning since June of 2012. So a long time. A long time. <laughs> it started as a hobby for me. Um, it only in the last few years has grown into somewhat of a career. Mm -hmm. um, but it has always been, it's like about bettering yourself uh, in a lot of ways, I think. Um, you know, you, you work hard. It's such a singular activity. Uh, you know, GDQ is great because it has that sense of community and, you know, it reminds us that we're all working on these things together. Um, there's a lot of, you know, Discord servers where people share information and strats and even back in the day it was IRC servers. And it really is just this striving for perfection or striving for at least a better version of whatever you did before. I mean, practice is such an integral part of the process. Um, and so your goal is for those things to become automatic, right? Because the more automatic it becomes, the higher your percentage chance of success becomes, for sure. And time. Oh, I won. It Good says job, first. Ada. It says first place. What, what is actually happening in your brain when some motion or action becomes autonomous? Well, the neuroanatomy of memory is not located in any one spot. It's all over your brain. And so in the motor learning stage of muscle memory, you see certain spikes in activity in certain areas of your head. But in the motor memory consolidation stage, those areas become less activated, but the connections between them get stronger. It's a basic way of how the human brain works. The more you activate certain areas and activate each other, the more efficient those pathways become, the easier it is or not to activate those synapses. And what's really interesting about motor learning and muscle memory in particular is that it's a different kind of long-term memory than explicit 
long-term memory, which is declarative. So it's facts and other things you can say about the world that you know to be true, like the capital of your country, or the fact that your Tinder crush is definitely not six feet tall. So if I go and ask these speedrunners what they're actually doing to make down to the millisecond precise movements, they might not even be able to tell me. Uh, yeah, let's count down here, guys. Three. Uh, in terms of Mega Man 6, uh, there's a lot of, like, canceling that's involved, so there's a lot of, like, very rapid movement with it, so there's a lot that I have to think about to make sure I'm doing that accurately. It's very technical on movement. When I first started, I was probably thinking a lot more about what I did. I also did a lot simpler strats back then, so it was more of a worry. Um, during that is, you know, thinking about, oh man, this is coming up, I gotta be ready for that. And there's still some of that with a few very risky tricks, but for the most part, it's just a flow for it. Yeah, usually, kind of thing. yeah, usually at this point it's uh, subconscious. Um, some things you'll have a visual cue for, but there's some examples of like stuff that you can't even see, and it's just all by rhythm sometimes as well. Once you get into a flow of things, it's just really satisfying and just fun to be like, oh yeah, we're going through this and doing these kinds of cool tricks here and there. And Tarek has nerves of steel, you know, he doesn't care. He's just so good at this game. It's kind of nice to know that you're really good at something, even if it's niche. When it comes to speedrunning, I think there's something else going on here too. Now, whenever you make a movement with your muscles, no matter how complex, your brain has to send a signal to those muscles, right? Well, over evolutionary time, your brain has made that process more efficient by somatotopically mapping parts of your body on to the motor cortex of your brain, which you can see here. Now, on the motor cortex of your brain, as we figured out through transmagnetic stimulation of people's brains, parts of your body are represented right on it, with those parts of your body taking up space proportionate to how much control you need over those parts of your body. So your legs are connected to your hips and your feet. Yes, that makes sense in this brain mapping, but they have less overall space than something like your hands. Now for speedrunners, I believe that going on studies I've seen from violinists and what happens to their hands and the representation of their hands in their brains, that speedrunners are having a disproportionate size hand and maybe eye map forming on their heads that allows them to be so quicky quicky and games done fastly. But to really find that out I'd have to um, uh, get in get in there to, for some of them. Let's go team, it's a face! Check with the same time here. Oh, there, neck, neck, neck. So I do a lot of hard challenges, not just necessarily speedrunning, and a lot of that is definitely, like, it's very rewarding. Like, um, you know, I, something I like to say is most of the most of the most rewarding things in life are hard. Sure. And speedrunning, Kaizo, hard games, any of that thing falls into that category. It's very rewarding to put a lot of effort into something, and then when you finally, like, it can be, it can be soul crushing, don't get me wrong, but then when you finally get it, all that feeling is so great. Speaking of Carl and what he's learned, let's see if he can uh, glean any information here. And when you're doing out. a speed run, at first a lot of it is coming up with cues, visual cues, audio cues, ways to train your brain to be able to do something that has a very precise window very accurately so that you can do it every time. Um, I personally like making visual cues. Um, but at, what eventually will happen is if you practice all of these different things many, many, many times, sort of like playing an instrument, I, mm -hmm. you know, I play piano, like at sure. some point your, ha your hands know what to do, everything is just happening, yeah. and yeah, you enter a flow state and it just happens. Um, when you're doing something for the first time though, like in this, I don't know if you want to talk about this at all, but like, sure. in, a, like in a blind race, it's, you can't really do that because you've never seen these before. Like, but they'll be, I think, you're, I think brains go for pattern recognition in this case. So for instance, you've never done this exact same thing before, but you've done something like it. And so you, your brain just sort of like slaps that pattern in there really fast. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on what the setup is for a particular game and all that, but that's sort of the idea. There's a shot. Oh, and he hits it. Great job. So again, I'm a scientist by trade. 
And so I think breaking something down into its constituent components and sort of like analyzing how does this work? Because, okay, in a game, if you want to do a precise setup where like multiple variables are interacting at the same time, if you want to be able to manipulate those, predict how they're going to work and do all of that consistently, you have to understand them. And so the process of, I'm going to do experiments. I'm going to throw this shell, bounce on this enemy, do this thing this way, that way, another way. Eventually you sort of take all these disparate pieces of information and synthesize them together and that gives you like your actual speed run and that's exactly what I do in science you do experiments you test hypotheses and as you sort of design designing really good experiments and understanding how something works is how you get anything done so in speed running I find it's the same I have no idea which one of those things like I do first but I find them very similar I would say to get good at a speed run just like getting good at a musical instrument if you do it every day for 30 minutes you can get pretty darn good at it, it sure. I think it depends on your age I think that the younger you are the faster your like you know neurology will sort of you know be able to adapt to that I mean I think you see this in every single professional thing or sport or whatever is like you know people when they start when you're really young you just learn it faster advantage of neuroplasticity or neuroplasticity whatever. exactly um, so I've noticed it's a little harder as I, I mean, I'm in my 30s now yeah. I've noticed it's a little harder to pick up new things but it's still it's still very doable I think having like a good system can really reduce the amount of time that it takes some people speed run by playing a game and then they play the game and then they play the game and eventually I think they just hope that their brain makes the right connections and everything sort of flows and works together. I think you're getting at tar specific targeted practice. I am getting at targeted practice, right. So for instance, if you, if you take somebody who just turns on the game and plays through it from start to finish, that is going to produce a different type of player than somebody who goes in with an emulator with slow down and they look at sure. things one frame at a time and they understand exactly why something happens. They come up with, and like, it's not just, oh, I'm going to do this about right now. It's like, no, on this frame, I'm going to do this input. Mm -hmm. And then you use an emulator to load a save state right there over and over and over and over again. And you do that a hundred times in a row, you are going to have a level of consistency and control that someone who doesn't do that will never be able to do. So I think the best speedrunners all use those techniques of really focused targeted practice. And if you take like the total amount of time it takes you to get good at a game, that's going to drastically reduce it using targeted practice techniques like that. Certainly, I think it's very similar to playing a musical instrument. That's just something that I'm familiar with also. So a good speedrun is like a great orchestra. Sure. I mean, or maybe a good soloist, you know, whatever. <laughs>
might be shackled to a suboptimal way to play and practice their favorite games. But then again, this is just one study of one simple game. Does suboptimal, as a study defines it, really matter when with the support of millions of gamers around the world, you can still pull off something spectacular? Until next time. Thank you so much to GDQ, to all the speedrunners and staff who helped me make this video went a lot more professionally than if I was just gonna sneak in there and film stuff, which is what I was originally gonna do. And thank you to all the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video, which allows me to do stuff like this. If you wanna join the facility, if you wanna drape on a silky white lab coat, get ideas for future episodes to me. You want to see episodes early, you want to see bloopy bloops videos, and you want private members only live streams with me? Ho oh, ho, wait a second there, Charlie. Not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every single week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the time. No, seriously, again, thank you to all the runners who agreed to be interviewed, who gave some flavor to this story of muscle memory. I do think that speedrunning is its own beast in terms of learning what skills uh, you need and practicing those skills, and I find it very interesting that there could be a point of diminishing returns for practice, which intersects with what society wants speedrunners to do. Will we ever get to a point where we know how much is too much or how little is too little? I don't know, probably not. Not without a sweet dono train or hype train. I, I don't speak Twitch. <laughs> Let's get some hearts in the chat. All right, Omega Lols, thanks.